Welcome to German in New York, the podcast about the German-speaking community in New York City. We interview Germans, Austrians, and Swiss about their life and work in the Big Apple. We have a special episode today. We had the pleasure to talk to Patrick Obermuyela, the U.S. ambassador of the BVB Borussia Dortmund Soccer Club, a welcomed guest in New York City. He told us more about the BVB's upcoming U.S. tour in July. They are coming to Seattle as well as South Bend, Indiana. For more details on the tour itself, please refer to their official Twitter account at BlackYellow or the Instagram at BVB09. You can also find the info in the show notes. Patrick didn't only tell us more about the tour itself, he also gave us some insights into the increasing popularity of soccer in the US, the BVB fan clubs in the US, and his own path from professional soccer player to BVB ambassador. So, first of all, thanks a lot for your time, Patrick. Um, you are the BVB ambassador for the US. Can you tell us more about BVB's presence and the fan base here? Uh, I sure can. Um, I mean, obviously, BVB is new to the US. Last year, we traveled uh, there for the first time, brought the whole team, and, um, some activities and some, some games, and it was a great success. Uh, we all we noticed that the market for, for football in the U.S. is, is growing, is growing. Mm -hmm. We want to participate in that, and we felt an instant connection with, uh, with fan bases in the U.S., and uh, we noticed some, some interest. And that's uh, why BVB is interested in, in uh, yeah, expanding that bond and expanding the market in the U.S. And that's why we're coming back this year. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that there is an interest. That's, I think, a general um, development in, in the past years. There are many studies that say that soccer is getting more and more popular. What is your take on it? Why that development? It's an interesting question. Obviously, I noticed since I've been coming to the States uh, for a long time now, I noticed that a lot of children start playing soccer. You see, you see children playing soccer in or football in in every park in the in the USA, and uh, somewhere along the way, they they kind of they kind of lose that and and have a different aim because they know there's a scholarship in maybe American football, there's a scholarship in ice hockey or baseball or basketball, but there isn't one in in, uh, in football in soccer. So maybe that's why they lose the aim and the focus and. The other, the other point is probably that you need people to idolize, to, to want to follow them and, and do what they achieve, or achieve what they have achieved. And, and maybe there hasn't been enough of these idols. Like they have Christian Pulisic, for instance, now. They had uh, Lyndon Donovan and there were some other guys before him, but not as big as maybe Christian Pulisic's uh, uh, impact was in the sport in the U.S. So that's a chance for the sport. But the sport is developing uh, and the marketing is, is getting better and bigger in the U.S. Uh, regarding football. So uh, overall, I think it, it, it's been accepted more and that's why more and more people are uh, trying to follow. Mm. So you mentioned Christian Pulisic. That's um, an American player who played for the, the BVB, right? So do you think that the roots and the background have as much of an impact marketing wise that it could actually influence the transfer politics of soccer in Germany like do maybe clubs choose their players according to the market that they want to enter well I don't think it's this way around it's in my opinion it's either the other way around that if you have a player in the And you notice that there is a bigger interest in in his home country or the mm -hmm. moment where he's coming from uh, uh, regarding his nationality. That you can also use that, but that's not uh, not not like BBB is trying to open another market somewhere in the world. That's why we're trying to get a player out of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Christian is with the club since 16 or, or 215 to 16, something like that. So a couple of years before we even tried to to go overseas and. and uh, And, and participate over there. So I think it's just a, a nice coincidence that we have one of the, or maybe the main player of the U.S. Uh, soccer department to our team. And obviously, um, you would be you would be not smart if you wouldn't wouldn't try to use that to your advantage. Of course, yeah. So there is a U.S. tour plan soon for July 2019, right? Um, can you tell us more about it? Sure, we're coming in, uh, in mid of July, so July 15th is when the team is traveling to, to Seattle first. We have a game against the MLS team, uh, the Seattle Sounders, on the 17th, July 17th. Um, there will be another big game uh, in South Bend at the Notre Dame uh, College Stadium on the 19th against Liverpool. 
FC. So two big games for, for us in the U.S. in two different areas because we trying to, to get the team there and meet as many people as we can. There will be fan activities uh, around the game. There will be uh, public trainings on the days before the game. Uh, so there's a chance to meet the players, meet the team, uh, see them see them uh, up in front live uh, um, while they're practicing. So, um, yeah, we noticed that interest. I mentioned that last summer tour was, was really, really uh, enjoyable and was really fun for the team, for the club as well. And that's why we are hoping to to expand that that bond that we develop with a growing fan base that we have in the US um, and, and get the team there to, to satisfy our fans overseas. How did you actually choose Seattle and South Bend? Is there a specific reason behind that? I mean, we've been in that in that uh, what is it, Midwest area, so the Chicago mm -hmm. area with the team, and uh, there was a there was a big connection there with the fans. So South Bend isn't too far from Chicago. Maybe that's a reason. I can't really uh, tell you. That's a different part of the club who's deciding where to go. But I think that's the reason why we're coming back to that area. And um, obviously, you're always looking for for interesting. Um, let's say, friendships, maybe even partnerships after that. So you're trying to get in touch with, with people from the MLS and see maybe where's an interesting uh, matchup, where's an interesting uh, team to, to face as a, as a test. And uh, this time it's Seattle. I mean, last year was uh, LAFC, which was great. We got, uh, we got to, to see LA with the, with the uh, whole team. That was fun too. So now it'll be South Bend and, and Seattle. So it's, it's, it's not why, that we choose the... The city we would like to go, it's, it's either the, the, the fact that we need an interesting matchup and a nice, a nice uh, team to, to play against while we're there. And Liverpool, of course, I could imagine is exciting because you get to see a good old friend, Jürgen Klopp, the trainer of Liverpool. Are you excited to see him and actually play him? Oh, I actually do see him uh, quite some sometimes because we do stuff besides football together every now and then, uh, marketing-wise. I mean, I'm always happy to to chat with him and see him uh, see him again. But uh, that's a that's a great great matchup playing Liverpool. Um, I mean, the clubs are so 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 similar in, in some ways. And now they have our, our former coach, which is the, which is great. And obviously, is one of the best teams in in Europe at the moment. Uh, just reached the Champions League final, so maybe we will be playing the the Champions League winner of this season. That would be would be awesome, not just for Jurgen Klopp. For us as well to face that kind of team, um, that's a that's a great matchup. I think the fan bases of both clubs are, are uh, enjoying each other. Both are celebrating with the same anthem uh, before the game, so that that will be a nice atmosphere. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, are there any other things, any other plans, tours planned for the future? Maybe next year or the year after to the US. Actually, I don't know uh, what's happening that far ahead. I know about this summer, and I, I'm happy that I'll be able to to join the team on that USA trip again. Um, what comes after that will be decided. Uh, um, I think after after we've been there. But I think if, if things develop the way they they did up to now, why not? I mean, up, up to now it, it's been really fun working in the in the US. Um, expanding that that interest that mark, uh, market and bonding with the fans we have and if it works out why not of course so do you still play soccer yourself i do every now and then not as much as i maybe should <laughs> and not as much as i would like to because uh, they have a time issue there but um i do enjoy playing we have a new legends team uh, at the bbp It started almost a year ago, and we, we get to travel the world and play interesting teams. Actually, we're, we're playing Liverpool Legends as well, but we're not going to the U.S. for that. We're playing them in Hong Kong, which is an, uh, a nice uh, a nice um, uh, city to, to play them. So I do play every now and then, but I, I should maybe practice a little more. <laughs> these kind of games. Um, I mentioned that you are the U.S. ambassador, but I think you're actually the international ambassador for the BBB, right? We, we have a couple of guys that are representing the club internationally and I'm mostly involved in everything that's going on in the U.S. So I'm the guy, let's say the main guy when it comes to the U.S., but I do help out uh, whenever there is uh, activities in, in Asia and we don't have enough people to, to do so. But um, my, 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 my market, my biggest uh, area is the U.S. and, and I'm, I'm 
I'm happy that that's the case because I I always loved actually I always loved everything about the US. So I'm, now I get to to travel and work there. That's that's really fun actually. Any soccer clubs in the the US that you follow actively? Is there anything that you would say? Okay, that's like the future. I did follow uh, Atlanta a little bit last season. Of course, there's a German player as well. They were pretty successful, and obviously have an eye on, on Bastian Schweinsteiger and Chicago Fire. So I do uh, follow a little bit LAFC, uh, especially after we played them. So I, I do have an interest in that, and I noticed that it's uh, even the the quality of the game really has improved. I think the first MLS game I was watching was LA Galaxy against Colorado. Well, what's the team's name? It's it's been a while, so but it was against Colorado because we have a we had a former former American but uh, Bundesliga player who was playing in Colorado and he he uh, got us tickets, so we went to LA and, and see uh, saw that game and I I um I must say the the quality of the game in the MLS the standard really really ha um, has improved and got better. We really enjoy playing LAFC, and I think uh, Seattle Sounders will put us to a real test. Yeah, I think the MLS is actually uh, around since only 20 years or 25 years, yeah, something like that, new. right? It's pretty new. I mean, there's great yeah. soccer in the US. We had bigger names like Pele playing, uh, Frank Beckenbauer, all these legends played in the US. So there is football in the US for quite some time, but the MLS itself is, is kind of new. It's still a little babies so to say. <laughs> and how was your experience um going from a professional soccer player to an ambassador uh it it, it was interesting i mean before I, i i took over this part at the at the club i was um doing media stuff for for a big um uh broadcaster here in, in germany mm -hmm. and uh, so i worked in in media for for three years commentating games Uh, hosting shows uh, for the games. That was an interesting thing. And I really got off the pitch and right into the TV studio. So there was no time to, to really adjust. And that helped me just to, to fall into it and just, just, yeah, just do it and learn mm -hmm. it along the way, kind of. So, um, After that time, I, when I stopped working for that broadcaster, uh, I moved back to Dortmund because I was, I'm originally from Hamburg in Germany and, uh, I was, I was already back up there in Hamburg and, but I moved back because, uh, because of so many other private things came back to, to Dortmund. And that was the moment when, when the club approached me and said, listen, you have an idea about expanding our markets and going to the U.S. And we kind of think you, you would fit that profile, uh, quite well and I couldn't believe my eyes because I told you how much I, I was in love with the US uh, even before that so now somebody was offering me to to go there on a regular basis and, and, and meet people and, and meet other sports people um, that was that was just awesome so I really really was was in love right away with that idea and I'm happy that the, the BBB uh, mm -hmm. thought of me a perfect match of perfect that's great um, What would you say is your biggest challenge as ambassador? What's in general maybe the biggest challenge of bringing BVB to another country or the culture of BVB? I don't know if there's a real big challenge because I, I, I played for this club five years, so I really I really know the club, and I think I I really adapted a lot of values that the club has uh, has uh, has in it, and mm. they're kind of my my values as well, anyways, but. The connection was was there right away from the beginning. So I had a great time here, and I really love everything about BBB and about the city Dortmund as well. That's why I moved back here. I told you that that mm -hmm. even my my firstborn uh, was born in Dortmund. So I'm really connected, not just with the club, but with the city as well. And uh, so it was um, it's easy for me to represent the values, the the story which I'm part of, uh, playing for the club in a crucial time. Uh, especially when you, when I got here in 2008 and the club was just recovering from a very, very bad time. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's an interesting story there, these values, there's uh, the history and, and my own connection to the city, which I can represent now. And that's not really a challenge because that's a given. I mean, I know what I'm talking about and I know what I, what I, what I'm trying to sell. And it's not just, it's not really selling. It's just telling what I, what I uh, experienced here <laughs> during, during my time. That's great. Um, I asked around our office in Germany as well as here in the U.S. and there was one question which everyone asked me to ask you. Okay. Um, so 
when will the BBB become Deutscher Meister again? <laughs> so what, what dates, what is today? It's the night. So let me think. Hey, May 18th would be a great <laughs> Yeah, that would be great. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> hey guys, a short interruption at this point. We recorded the interview on the 9th of May 2019. And as real German soccer fans know by now, the Deutsche Meister title is out of reach for the BBB since the games on Saturday the 18th of May and by the time of the release of this episode. Now, let's go back. I'm commentating that game uh, for, for our uh, US takers. Uh, for the Bundesliga so that would be great to, to commentate the game where we will receive the, the championship trophy but um, I mean it's a tough situation obviously yeah. this season we, we have come close uh, we stumbled a little bit uh, recently mm -hmm. but it's still within our reach uh, mm -hmm. we need a little help from 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 the other team from the Bayern team um, We're shooting. We're aiming for it. I mean, still, still the chance. So the team will do everything uh, they can. I think this this weekend will be crucial. Um, it's four points when when Bayern wins their game. Mm. It's done. It's over. But I think the development the team took over the the last 12 months was really great. Nobody really expected that. Given that we have a new coach, we have new players, mm. we have a, 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 a team that is mixed between young people and uh, and experienced people, new players. And, And players that has been uh, have been here, but giving these ups and downs these last couple of years, this season was a real success. Even though, in 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 a in the case that we wouldn't win everything in the in the end, um, and it wouldn't really feel uh, as, mm -hmm. as successful that uh, as we would like it to, um, it would be a successful successful season, and we would shoot for for everything we can next season as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course. So, talking about the tour, are there still tickets available for the people who want to go, who would like to go to South Bend as well as Seattle? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are. I would say yes, there will be. Perfect. <laughs> I don't even know if the tickets are already on, on sale. But whenever you follow our Twitter account at Black Yellow or our uh, IG, our Instagram, which is at BVB09, um, then you will know and, and, and get all the infos you need around or regarding the games and the tour and the event mm. uh, around the team and their activities. So just just follow that, our social media channels and there will be all the infos out there. Could you tell us more about the fan base here in the US? Are there clubs? Are there um, any developments? Yeah, there are some, some fan clubs. Uh, before we got to, to the US last year, we had five uh, fan clubs in the, in the USA and uh, Right now we have 17, so there is a growing interest. Um, probably the most interesting for our next tour would be the, the Cascadia Dortmund fan club, which is uh, in the Seattle uh, area and which is somebody you, you, you want to get in touch with if you want to see about activities as well, not just our uh, Twitter and, and IG accounts, so maybe their uh, Facebook accounts as well for information and maybe context about uh, some, some activities around the games. And the other one will be the BVB Midwest Fan Club, which is situated in Chicago. But uh, they have a lot of people from, from all over that area um, joining them, watching games together. And they actually uh, are going to be in, in the South Bend uh, area as well for, for the game against Liverpool. So these mm -hmm. are the, the two fan clubs you, you want to get in touch with uh, if you want to meet up with other fans uh, coming to mm -hmm. the game. So after your last tour last year, you had an increase of 12 clubs after yeah. like one summer? That's how well we did over there, yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> so that means we can expect maybe 12 more or maybe 24 more after yeah, this tour? Let's, 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 uh, let's get that number up there. I mean, I wouldn't mind if, if it would be 20 after that, uh, 50 after that. So um, we're mm -hmm. trying to... to tell the story to, to make or tell or show how attractive the BBB uh, idea, the BBB values and our football is. And if people like it, they should all um, group up and, and form some fan clubs all over the U.S. And I will make sure that, oh, that's a, that's a big step now, but I will make sure I, I try my best to, to get in contact and touch with, with all of them and, and maybe meet all of them. Uh, while we're on tour or maybe while I'm on tour in the US. When, uh, Now you said it. Now you have to I hold your word. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Will... organized. Um, we plan to actually catch up after the tour. So I will hold you to that. I will ask you about that. Job is always worth a travel. So, of course. Yeah, <laughs> 
So as soccer becomes increasingly popular worldwide, and especially here in the U.S., what's, uh, what makes the BVB special? Why should fans who are getting into soccer follow the BVB instead of other clubs? I think besides that we play very good, attractive, and successful football, of course, um, I think we are, we are a really fan-orientated club. It's always about the connection between fans and uh, and the club itself. Um, for an example, um, we're not raising our ticket prices as much as other clubs do when they reach a certain level of of, uh, of success and play against more attractive teams. Our tickets are still available for for everybody. Really, everybody could afford to come to a game and and see the team. Other where, uh, like elsewhere in, in, in Germany, but in Europe as well, uh, tickets are really expensive when you see attractive and successful football. So there's a, there's a, a specialty for, from this club. The other, the other things are that we have a, we have a special history and it's not the, the old history. So really far back. It's, it's the recent history, the last 10 years. It's, it's been really special. So in, in 2005, this club was, was nearly bankrupt. So. Lights out, almost. Mm -hmm. And what we made or what the club has made out of that, uh, with some right decisions, the right people in place, uh, the right players in place, um, and between 2005 being almost bankrupt and the next championship uh, has been only six years, five or six years. So it wasn't an, a really fast development to success. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting approach a different way of, 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 uh, of football, of playing football. Um, it was really passionate. And, and then this connection between the club and the fans, that's what, what makes BVB so special, not just to me, but I think to, to everybody. And whenever you get that feeling and whenever you really dig into that and, 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 uh, and get to know about the club and the history, uh, you will be infected. You will be mm -hmm. Is that maybe also one of the reasons why the BBB is so popular around the Midwest, around the Chicago area? Because that's that's kind of known as the area which is close to the Ruhr area in Germany. Yeah. It's also hardworking people, also this mentality. Maybe that's a that's a, that? that's a that's a good fit. That's a perfect fit, and maybe yeah. that's why there's a real active. I don't know if it's the biggest fan club in, in the US, but it's a real active one, um, and. Uh, That's why it fits so good that we, we're going to go back there. Maybe Liverpool is in that area again because of that yeah. similarities between the club yeah. and the history and the, and the fan bases. So, um, yeah, it, it clearly makes sense to go to that area. But Definitely. I think that's, 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 that's our special history, our core value, not just raise, uh, raise ticket prizes and mm -hmm. get more money out of it. No, stay connected and stay true to your fans. And, and, and get in touch with as many people as possible. And mm -hmm. it's just possible for everybody to, not just to like our club, but to, to be involved and to, to get to see an actual game. Uh, and by the way, since you're from New York, uh, there's a fan club in New York as well. So if you want to get in touch with that, it's the Brooklyn Borussia uh, NYC or New York City. So that's another fan base we have in, in, in New York area. So mm. maybe for you. Yeah. The next active member. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so, talking about New York, do you have something that we call here a New York moment? I do. I do. Actually, I do have a, a lot of New York moments, but um, regarding football or my club, uh, once was in New York. It was in 2015. I was in New York for my, uh, for, let's say, 25th birthday. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so I had a, a couple of days in, in Manhattan, New York City, and uh, I was trying to, to find a place to watch the, the, the derby against uh, Charlton mm -hmm. here. So it was an, a Saturday morning. It was 9.30, and we found that sweet little uh, sports bar. Uh, and we, since it was early, we needed a proper breakfast. So we ordered an, an, a real English breakfast with beans and bacon and sausage, and a little steak on the side, some, some potatoes, and, of course, a pint. Because you can't watch football or a real derby without having a, a, a proper beer, so that was my special New York football moment. And I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. That sounds like we need to reactivate that. Maybe the Brooklyn Borussia would love to do that with you again for the next derby. I'm waiting for my invitation. 
I will talk to them. Yeah. Let's do that. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So I have one last general question. What would you say is the current biggest challenge for the BBB? Um, actually, it's it's what you will what, what what to take from this season. Like it, no matter how this season will end, and it's only two two more games left. Um, you have to analyze things the right way and and get the right ideas out of it to to take the right steps for the next season. Um, I said it before that this season was a success up to now, and it will be a success no matter what, what's happening the last two games. And But it could feel differently. And mm -hmm. if you would change too many things coming into the next season, that could be a problem. It could make things worse instead of better. So you should, you should analyze things right and do the right things in the, in the, uh, in the between time uh, coming up for the next season and then and then try to make thing, uh, uh, things better. But for that, you have to see what the season was and it was a success. So I'm, I'm hoping that everybody uh, thinks the same way uh, mm -hmm. and, and does the and, 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 and do the right things in, in the summer break. Thank you so much, Patrick. You're very, very welcome. Thanks again to Patrick for his time. Feel free to follow him on Instagram for some exclusive insights. His handle is at Ovomuk, which is O-W-O-M-U-C-K, or on Twitter it's at RealOvo. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. Visit our website for more information. It's german-in-newyork.com. Hear you soon. <laughs>